Hello everyone, this is Jotto and welcome to Versus Series where a member of my team, Ace Breakers, faces off against a well-known or up-and-coming pro player. And for this week we have the return of Blackout from the first episode of Versus Series. Since then he has been moved on to Team Dignitas. So very, very excited to get him on for this particular show. Now before we start, as usual I'm going to do my news thing. Uh, we've got lane 6 for any of you Soulforge people, that's happening tomorrow, live. I'll put the uh, Reddit post of the information in the description so you can check that stuff out if you want to. And as for the, uh, the Hearthstone content, my weekly show this week is going to be about the uh, two balance changes to Lyra and Starving Buzzard and sort of examine how they're going to affect the game in general. But anyway, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Now. Jumpy has started with a priest list. Now, this is made by Crispy, I'm guessing, considering the fact that it's called Very Crispy. But, um, this list is actually, it's a tempo list by the looks of it. Running Double Undertaker, Double Zombie Chow. Uh, double Injured Blade Master is interesting. A lot of people have cut it because of Dark Cultist, but he's actually running both. And as for the rest of it, we've got Fugan and Stalag, that's very weird to me, and nothing above 6. It's a very, very interesting priest list, and I really, really am excited to see where this goes. Now, as for Blackout, he has got uh, the rogue list that he has named Heart. Uh, this is one of the last times we'll see a rogue list, I'm guessing, uh, which reminds me, the bands this week were Rogue by Blackout and uh, Warlock by John P. So, this particular Miracle Rogue list is playing the single Conceal, it's also playing Double Sap for Hunters. Uh, double Earthen Ring Forest here, that's interesting. Helps a lot with the aggro decks and also Hunter Burn. Uh, same with Double Sludge Belcher. This is one of those newer ones, which is a lot more, it's a lot more solid and mid game focused as opposed to just burst combo only. Uh, and it doesn't run things like Azure Drakes because they're a little too slow at the moment. So I'm very interested to see how this works. And uh, with that, we'll go on to the Mulligans. Now, it would appear that Jumpy has a Absolutely insane hand. I'd send back the shield and keep the other two. And Blackout has the Earthen Ring and Eviscerate. Interesting that he sent back the Earthen Ring. Alright, so, on to the game. Now, as far as opening hands goes, we do have Jumpy with a crazy one. He has Undertaker, Coin, Dark Cultist, which is just absurd. And Blackout has... An interesting one. On turn 3, he can make a 4-4 Van Cleef with his backstab. Yeah, I actually agree with not uh, backstabbing this, because even if he activates it, uh, you can backstab and then eviscerate if he buffs it, or use Edwin. Interesting choice not to go for the Dark Cultist. Alright, so we're going to see the backstab, the SI7, I mean not SI7, uh, backstab Edwin for the 4-4 and kill off that Undertaker, the pesky pesky Undertaker. Edwin is incredibly irritating here. Uh, you could, well I mean we'll see what he draws first. I think you could go Cultist, Coin, Power Word Shield to stop it from dying to Dagger. So no matter what he kills you get bonuses out of it. I mean, you could just see what he draws first. Yeah, I think... I mean, it depends exactly how comfortable you feel with certain parts of the deck. I think in this case, you just go for the Cultist, and next turn you can coin out a Fugan or play the Power Word Shield here. Yeah, he is. Alright, so he's playing out his Power Word Shield, trying to bait out some sort of removal on top of this. Also draws him a card. And that card was Orcanai. Shadow Step, Sap, Replay. Oh no, you don't want to Sap here because it's Shadow or Death. Yeah, perfect sequence of plays from uh, Blackout. Absolutely perfect. Shadow Step at once so that you've only played one card. Replay it so it becomes a 4 4 and uh, play out the Sap. Big tempo loss. At this point, I think you just have to play the Open Eye. I'm not sure though, you may want to save that for a circle combo, although you do have Injured Blade Monsters. You could play an Injured Blade Monster because it's not backstabbable. Which is an actual phrase, it is now a phrase, deal with it. Uh, so this is non-backstabbable, 
and he can go for the Eviscerate. I think Sludge Belcher is the obvious play. The problem is if he has something like another Power Word Shield and heals it, and then you have a 4-7 on the board that you can't really deal with. So he's just trying to make sure that this Edwin goes the distance. Oh, we see a Zombie Chow coming out here. We also have Stalag, which is the big bad threat, especially considering he just used an Eviscerate. So that's when the Belcher comes down. This game is going pretty well for Black Hat at the moment. He needs a couple key draws, he needs Auctioneer at some point, otherwise he's going to run out of cards. The question is, how do you actually deal with this board? I think you run the uh, Stalag into the Sludge Belcher and then use Cabal Shadow Priest to steal the 1 2. You could also uh, run that in and then go Orcanai and Circle, clearing the board. There's a couple options. Alright, so he's going for the Orcanai Circle. With, uh, I think if you're going for the Circle play, is it worth playing the Zombie Chow? I think post. Yeah, post Circle. So that's the safer play. It leaves you with less of a board. It leaves you with less of a board, though, I guess. Actually, no, you have a 7 1, 7 3 1, 2 3. Yeah, the only disadvantage of this play is actually that the Orc and I circle combo gets not wasted, but used. Good sequencing there from Blackout, so he gets the heal instead of the damage on that zombie chow. But now we're going to see the Cabal Shadow Priest come down here and probably steal this 1 1. That's one of my favorite things to do with uh, Cabal, is steal things with Death Rattle, especially once to draw you cards like Blue Hoarder and Blood Mage. Blood Mage is one of the best Cabal targets in the game. I mean, there's a couple ones that are better, like Armorsmith and things like that, but that's a lot more matchup specific. Is it time for a Thought Steal? That is the question. If he Thought Steals, he can still go Dark Cultist Power Word. Turns out he draws that. Holy Nova, does that affect things? Um, I don't think it does. I think you do want to go for the Thought Steal here. Auctioneer Leroy! <laughs> wow. Jeez, that's insane. So, you could play Cultist or Injured Blade Master. You play Injured Blade Master if you just want to heal it. You play Cultist if you don't. You may have to heal. start thinking about healing yourself, though. You're a bit low. One thing that that Thor Steel does do is it shows that Blackout does not have Leroy in his hand. So that is one of the things that it does show, which is very, very important information. Alright, so he's going for the Cultist and the uh, probably the Trade Heal or Heal himself. And when I say Trade Heal, I mean Damage Heal. Brings him out on top in that engagement. Now, he does have the Blade Flurry to end all Blade Flurries. The problem is that he loses his whole board by doing so. He just drew Shadow Step, so he may just have to go for it. At this point, I would actually consider just going face. I would not sap the 4-4. Unless he wants to clear. If he wants to clear, then sapping the 4-4 is fine. But if he doesn't want to clear, then sapping the 4-4 is a mistake. Uh, but he is going for the clear. I'm a bit worried about him actually being able to win the game at this point. I mean, we could just see... Uh, hmm, could see Holy Nova. Holy Nova doesn't do much, though. Orcanai kind of helps. And when I say kind of, I mean the problem with Orcanai is that you can't heal yourself. And your hero power doesn't get reset, it's not like Shadow Form, so this is a very awkward play. Injured Blade Master works, you could also play Gadgetan and Power Word Shield, I guess, but you know, he's going for the Power Word Shield and it's injured. Get a bigger threat on the board, try and get an answer. And I think the Ho uh, Holy Nova is a very good play here, actually. Get a 4 7, reduce his damage, and heal. Very good play for him. It means he's not just dead to Leroy. Oh, we have a Gadget Zan. We do, in fact, have a Gadget Zan. And I think at this point, he needs to just Blade Flurry. Or he's, wow, he's using the Shadow Step first. Interesting. Alright, so he's just trying to go for the 
straight win here. I don't think he can though. He can't over Blade Flurry and then play uh, the Ooze again, the Slime. So he did a lot of damage there. The problem is he didn't really get access to Leroy and the Gadget Zan is a bit late, I think. He can't really cascade spells. He didn't have the Conceal. So I'd say Jompy is still in a position where he can win this game. That is definitely for sure. So he's gonna go ahead and steal this ooze. Sorry, it's a slime, it's not an ooze. <laughs> Looks like a uh, ooze. Yeah, mistakes were made. He forgot about the uh, the Cabal in hand. There are some misplays which are so small that, well, they're not small in terms of impact, they're small in terms of subtlety. So it's very, very difficult to play around them at times. Something I always maintain while doing this series is that people make mistakes. Yes, even the best players make mistakes. That is part of being a Hearthstone player. Oh, that preparation is a bit too late. Alright, yeah. It's just making sure that it has the appropriate amount of health so you can actually do that. Yeah, he can't use the Earthen Ring. Doesn't have enough mana. Oh, go to Karen. I think both saps have been used. Yeah, I think both saps have in fact been used. So he's just going for the uh, going for the trade, and he'll probably play out this cultist as well. Get as much pressure on the board as is humanly possible, or priestly possible, I guess. Priests don't have to be humans. We're not discriminating here. The SI is not exactly what he was looking for here. In fact, I just go face with everything at this point. He needs Leroy, and he needs it now. Actually, more accurately, he needs uh, Gadgetan, Prep, Shiv, Leroy Shadow Step. <laughs> this is a tough situation for Blackout. This game deteriorates it pretty quickly for him. Oh, we have another Thought Steal. What's it gonna be? <laughs> Another Leroy and another auctioneer. Oh my god. So many auctioneers. Twice as many as uh, Blackout seen. And I'm not, that might be the same auctioneer he's seen. That's hilarious. I am. I would be so irritated if I was Blackout in this game. I would be so irritated. The funny thing is, auctioneer doesn't actually do much for the priest here. I mean. He has 12 from a hand next turn. Yeah, he's calculating on board. Oh, he healed himself. Oh, wow. This could actually lead to a top deck Leroy. No, he doesn't get it. Yeah, that was a, an Orc and I mistake where there shouldn't even been a opportunity for Blackout to win that. Actually, would it have mattered? I think... Wait, would it have mattered? He would have uh, top deck shift. If he had got Leroy off that shift, he was on 8 life. So no, it didn't matter. It actually did not matter. If he top deck Leroy off the shift, he would have won. Either way, regardless uh, of, uh, of what happened at the end there. Nice draws. <laughs> yeah, I actually kind of agree with that. He didn't type it out, but uh, see it on the recording. But yeah, it's actually a fair point. That game ended rather abruptly because of uh, the double Leroy. I actually do think that that particular game, Blackout was okay for most of it, but he didn't really get the... When he got the auctioneer, he didn't have the preparations or conceal or anything, so he couldn't cascade very well. He drew probably, I think, two or three cards off it. Uh, it was... I want to say Eviscerate, Shadow Step, Blade Flurry? Yeah, I think. So he drew three cards off it, which is not bad, but it's not good enough once you're that far behind. And he really needed to top deck that uh, that Lyra for the win, and he just never got it. So that's, that's basically how that game turned out. And I mean, that's one of the problems with Miracle. It's very inconsistent, but when it does work, it really works. Now, Blackout has in fact brought out a Hunter list. Now, 
Surprise, surprise, I know, right? But anyway, so this Hunter list is running one Flare, uh, one Stone Tusk. Keep in mind, these were prepared before beforehand, so banning Hunter is always a thing you can do, so you don't need to run double Flare. Still run the single one, though, because Mages and also... If you don't want to ban Hunter, you want to ban something else, or just Paladins, anything, can just be useful. We've also got Double Snake Trap, which is an interesting addition over the Explosives, and also Freezings, no Freezings. Alright, so the Mad Scientist only fetch the snakes, and there's only one bow because you can't support double bow with uh, with only two traps. It's a very, very interesting list. I actually quite enjoy this list. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see how it goes, but I actually uh, think it's a very, very interesting list. Now, if you notice, he's sending back the flare there because he knows that if something gets thought stolen, he wants it later, not now. As for the rest of the mulligans, it was pretty basic on Jummy Spawn, just don't keep anything that you don't want to play out. Now this Stone Test Boar is an interesting play. The reason he wants to play it out here is because he can play a 2 drop next turn and he can Hunter's Mark anything he needs to. But he won't have the mana to, uh, to do it appropriately. Alright, so he's playing the Mad Scientist. Try and get the Mad Scientist down as fast as possible. Get those traps out of your deck. He already drew a snake, which is a little irritating. Ideally, you want to get both of your traps off. At least if they're both snake traps, you want to get them off your Mad Scientist. Yeah, he's probably going to go with the Hunter's Mark here. Build your board. I would go Hunter's Mark, trade, and then just build your board to its maximum. A very aggressive start. One of the fastest starts I think you can get with Hunter. No cards in hand. <laughs> Very, very aggressive start. That circle is actually not going to do much. It's going to leave behind a trap. This is one of the most resilient boards ever. If you think about it, it's going to leave behind a trap, a beast, and two 1-1s. One it actually doesn't do much. I didn't see what he's playing out here. All right, Injured Blade Monster. And circle. Yeah, he's realized the Orkanai is not going to do much. However, he did just play a uh, Hunter's Mark. Alright, so he's fetching up his uh, his other trap. Now, the reason for this is because they don't know each other's deck lists, which means that this is most likely freezing, so he's gone to fetch it. So he has to play around freezing trap. He may still attack, just to check, but he's going to have to play around freezing and just hope for the best. Now, I could foresee playing Rivendare in this situation, weirdly enough. Uh, Orkanai has a problem where you can't really Holy Nova next turn. However, you could play Baron Rivendare. You also play Loot Hoarder and Heal. Yeah, he's trying to get some monsters right now. He's playing the Loot Hoarder out and he's healing. I think playing the Baron Rivendare definitely has some sort of consideration. But, uh, yeah. There's the Leroy, the super, super aggressive Leroy. And the taunt, exactly when you have Snake Trap on the board, that is hilarious. The one time when Silverback Patriarch is one of the best beasts you could have got there, that is quite funny. Oh, we have a Stalag. Where is your brother? Or is that a Fugan? I think that's a Stalag, right? Yeah, it's the bodybuilder guy. It's a Stalag. Now, the main problem is, if this is freezing, I think it's just game over, so he may just stop playing around freezing. I think that may be the, uh, the plan. Stop playing around freezing, there's nothing you can do about it. His heart probably jumped there, where he's thinking, oh, okay, it's freezing. No, it isn't. So he's going for the Holy Nova, clear out most of these snakes. I mean, he's going to leave four one ones on the board. But he does clear out a lot of these snakes, heals himself up a bit. And, oh wow, Kill Command. Kill Command doesn't do anything here because the beasts are not on board. However, Leroy Kill Command is a lot of damage. That is 11 damage to the face. In fact, he has lethal next turn. If the snake trap is procced, he has lethal. Oh, the Thought Steel didn't help much. So if Jumpy was paying attention to hand, then he would know that that trap is in fact snake. Because it won't be freezing, it'll be snake because he played it immediately afterwards and it was already in his hand. So yeah, he's uh, elected to not proc that. 
10, 13, it's not lethal. Leroy is not lethal. However, you can just press as much damage as possible, unless I miscalculated. Did I? No. He should be left on 3. Yeah, he is. Now, even if he heals, he has lethal now. He needs some sort of excessive healing, which he does not have. So that should be game. I don't think it's anything he can thought steal either. I think that's actually just game. Yeah, very, very aggressive star coming out of uh, Blackout here. I'd say in the first game, he uh, bricked a little bit on the draws. But in the second game, he definitely got a very good draw. A very, very good draw. One of the best draws you can get. If you want to be the aggressor, it's one of the best draws you could get. He got Hunter's Mark, Stone Tusk Boar, Snake Trap. He got Hunter's Mark, Stone Tusk Boar, Double Creeper, Double Snake Trap and the mad scientist so he basically got the best one of the i wouldn't say the best i mean you could probably throw a hound monster in there somewhere but uh, one of the best openings you could get especially against priest so very very powerful start coming out from him and that's just the game he's just going to go for the kill command and go for the uh the hunters the hunter hero power so we now have a tie we have a tied situation so we are going into a third game normally, which is nice. So Jompy has decided to bring out Ice Girl's Mage deck. Now this has been doing very, very well on the Hearthbone deck section recently because Shiv brought it out on uh, Deck Talk. But um, Ice Girl is uh, one of Jompy's teammates and has landed over this list and probably helped him work around with it a little bit. Interesting to bring it in against Hunter. I'm very, very curious to see how this works out. As for the list itself, we've got uh, four one drops. There are three secrets, all tech secrets, one duplicate, one mirror entity, one counter spell. Keep your opponent guessing. Two mad scientists. This is the kind of dupes mage I actually tried out uh, when mad scientists came out. It was quite good, but there were too many hunters. So I'm, I'm glad to see that another Ace Breakers player eventually broke it. That's, that's a decent amount of dignity for the. <laughs> we've got double polymorph, mostly to deal with high mains and. Cairns and just things with death rattle that are really irritating. Water Elemental is a super powerful card in this current metagame, just always is. We also have Double Sludge Belcher, Cairn Sylvanas, and the Kel'Thuzad. Now, Kel'Thuzad is really, really, really strange in this kind of deck, and with Duplicate, it gets even stranger. But you can uh, protect it with Counter Spell. What I mean with Duplicate is if they kill Kel'Thuzad, you get two more. If they kill something else, it comes back and you get two more, which you then play down and they kill and they come back over and over and over and over again. So it gets interesting with Duplicate, I'll put it that way. But I do like this list. Uh, this has definitely been well thought out and is a, a very, very powerful list at the moment, especially with Hunters. Probably going to be uh, going down a little bit on the play once the Buzzard nerf comes through. So anyway, keeping that in mind, we'll go on to the Mulligans for game three. Oh, we have a video problem over here. Okay, that was fixed. I completely missed that. Yeah, that was a video problem. Not much I can do about that. Um, but anyway, just minor video glitch. So we have the double Mana Worm start coming out from uh, Jumpy here. And in response, we have the double Mad Scientist start. Now, he's not going for the Mad Scientist here because he can use the bow on the coin to kill this thing. So, it's a bit weird wasting your uh, your tutus on it when you can just play those afterwards to fuel your bows. Now, he's going he's gonna to definitely go for a second Mana Worm here. Wow, Haunted Creeper. Alright, so now that he's seen double Mana Worm, he's going to go for this... Uh, this 2-2. Two -two. As we see a 2-2 two -two in response. I I will I will up your 2-2 two -two with a 2-2. Two -two. I didn't send these to the face, I should imagine. Yeah. Alright, so we could see Bo come out here. I think we should see Bo come out here. Trade the 2-2s. Two or actually no, the only traps you have in your deck are snake traps, so you can't trade the 2-2s. Two -two he thought about it, but then he realized, wait a second, this deck does not have a way of uh, procking bow without minions on the board. So there's not really a reason to sack your mad scientist when it will get you a trap that can't proc. Because keep in mind, the only traps in this entire deck 
are snakes. There are lots and lots and lots and lots of snakes. Now, Jumpy doesn't know that, but it can be assumed. And the mirror entity. <laughs> now, that may seem like a terrible, terrible target, but if you really think about it, this protects against freezing. And also, that mirror entity costs zero mana and no cards. That came off a mad scientist, so there was no investment into that mirror entity, which basically meant that Blackout played a 2-drop, and Jumpy played a 0-mana 1-2 that uh, leaves two 1-1s on the board and drew a card, which is crazy. Now, we're going to see the Unleash clear here. Problem is he can't use the bow, which means that this clear is awkward, to say the least. And in all honesty, I think that was actually the correct play. Though, I mean, the reason it was correct is because it's double unleash. If it was only one unleash, you may want to wait for a Hunter's Mark, maybe. But you need to clear some stuff off the board. As this game is going pretty south for him right now. This Water Elemental should be freezing him every single turn. In fact, I would say that there's enough burn in Jumpy's hand to just keep going and just use his hero power to pick off the 1-1s. One He's probably just going to use his hero power to pick off this Timberwolf and then leave it at that. Now, the problem is, you may have to use the Flare here just to draw, but you really don't want to because you've seen secrets, but you have to. Uh, Houndmaster is a very good top deck here. It makes sure that the uh, appropriate trap procs. It also means... I mean, how how would you even trade this? I guess you'd probably consider running something into the 2-3. Uh, Run the 3-3 three, three into the 2-3 and then trade. The problem with that is that the hero power just picks it off and then you can go face again. I mean, we do have a, uh, a Frosty Bolt here. How much damage does he have? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Not quite enough. So we're probably going to see a Frosty Bolt come down on this 3-3. Three, three. And then... Ping a 1-1. One, one, and then just go face. There's no reason to proc the, uh, the trap as the main point. That trap can stick on the board for the entire game. This is why Snake Trap is really good when you're the aggressor, but really, really bad when you're not. Now, I can see why you'd play out the Undertaker here, because you've already seen an Unleash, but I think you should still play around the second one, you never know. I mean, a Buzzard Unleash is one of the ways that you can lose this game, although it's still very unlikely. Buzzard off the top. Oh, a little bit of lag in the footage here. And, yep, we do, in fact, have a buzzard off the top. Called it. Five guy unleashed. Well, technically four. He has to sack a guy first. Yes, yeah, he's sacking a guy first. He figured out that the, uh, the unleash needs to be maximum. Now, a second fireball may actually just win. After all this, the second fireball may win. To be honest, I actually think that a second fireball for the win would probably be poetic justice because the buzzard was top decked. So, I mean, it's not too stupid, but it's still something to consider. A uh, slight mistake not playing out the Haunted Creeper when you had the opportunity to draw. But there are... I mean, the only thing you could draw, I guess, would be... I mean, no, you could probably play the Web Spinner and then play Creeper. No, I mean, play Web Spinner and then top deck Timberwolf and get that going, and that would have been super good. Oh, Flame Strike off the top. Off the top. If you do have a Flame Strike coming, coming down here, I mean, that Mad Scientist... Yeah, now now he knows there are no other trap types besides that snake trap because that mad scientist didn't even proc. Oh, we're going to see the double huffer. <laughs> this is the time when you don't want huffer. I mean, he is going to try and race. This, this game is going to be very close. It's going to depend entirely on top decks because of that buzzard, which is insane. 
There is seven damage in his hand right now. What is on the top of the deck? Is that lethal? Yep, that's lethal. Frost Firebolt coming in here for the win. I mean, as I said, I mean, it was a top deck. However, after the Buzzard top deck, I think it's it's pretty much justified. <laughs> Let's be honest here. It is pretty much justified that uh, John P also gets his, his little Lux Bount. So anyway, uh, the series in general was an interesting one. The first two games, I would say that one person got a really good draw. I mean, in the first game, I think Jumpy got a pretty good draw. Blackout got a good draw versus what he had to play against, so it actually went fairly well for him. However, the uh, the game itself ended up deteriorating quite quickly when he didn't get gadgets out. The second game transferred into the other end of the spectrum completely, and it just went more extreme. The Hunter deck drew incredibly well, and the Priest deck didn't really get what they needed to draw for that specific thing. There was a Holy Nova, there was a uh, Circle, but Priests need the early drops to deal with those kinds of openings. They need their Undertakers, their Zombie Chows, and that didn't happen, so uh, Jumpy got rolled. In the third game, it came down to a damage race, where one player was in a terrible situation, drew the exact card they needed, came back with that Buzzard Unleash, and then their opponent drew the same exact card needed in that Frostbolt for lethal. Which is crazy, that was one of the most top-decking central finales to a game I think I've seen in a while, and it all happened in the stage of two turns. And also the double, uh, the double huffer was really good to just go push damage over and over and over again. So both players got super lucky in the last game, and it just turned out that John P was far enough ahead so that when he got lucky, he didn't have to get as lucky top decking from Frostball or Fireball versus two Buzzards and then also two Huffers. So he didn't have to get as lucky to win the game simply because he was so far ahead in the first place. But anyway, um, thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback, put it in the comment section below. Um, I am aware that the music randomly stopped in the middle of the video. Uh, I didn't go back to edit that or anything because I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> I don't think it's worth it just to overlay music onto the uh, onto the video. Uh, but anyway, as for now, this has been Jotto, signing off.